Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, this is Tony Day. What I'm going to be doing today is uh, taking a look at some uh, media options and the Ursa 12K, at least with the um, information that we have available to us on what the bitrate is going to be for the full uh, sensor at 24 frames per second. Now I'm making this video because I want to make sure that I clarify uh, not only the uh, factual stuff about these cards and media, um, but also about my feelings about this kind of stuff uh, so that you understand me um, and why I would make the decisions I would make if I was going to be getting this uh, camera. And uh, also for some people to maybe have some clarification on uh, cards and media in general. So let's say you want to buy this uh, Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro 12K. It's pretty inexpensive, really. Like, in real life, what this is supposed to be able to do is pretty inexpensive. Considering that 8K cameras are insanely expensive, this camera, for what it's supposed to be able to do, is actually rather inexpensive. What I'm noticing is that some people are thinking that with this kind of bitrate, that uh, their SD cards are going to work perfectly fine. Now I know that there's supposed to be this dual uh, recording kind of thing, which, um, you know, they're, they, they're supposed to have some way of recording half of the stuff across two cards. I'm not going to be talking about that really because I don't know if that works. But there are some people arguing with me and saying that SD cards should work perfectly fine because their uh, speeds indicated on the card are, you know, around here or well above it. So I'm just going to talk about that, okay? So, um, you know, we're going to assume that with an SD card, you're going to want to try to shoot in the 12118 one kind of area. Let's just assume that, okay? Now, I'm going to go and look at some SD cards on BNH and let's see what we can find, okay? All right, so I did a search for SD cards on BNH, and in here I chose SDXC and UHS2. So let's just see what we got. Um, at the top here, we're seeing a SanDisk 64 gig uh, Extreme Pro UHS2. And look, it says uh, on the front there, 300 megabytes a second. So let's click on this. Check that out, 300 megabytes a second. Uh, so this should work, right? Um, if we go back in here, look at that. 300 is bigger than 241 and 160 and 241 and 180, right? So this is, should be fine. Not quite, okay, not quite. Let me show you why. So with this card, you see this 300 MBS. The thing is that it doesn't tell you what that is. This number, in my opinion, is almost useless for what we do in video production because uh, this number is usually not what we need, okay, to understand how this card is going to perform. So let's uh, try to find out what this number is supposed to mean, okay? So let's uh, go to the specs. And if we look at the specs here, um, it says data transfer, okay? Read speed, 300 MBS, maximum burst. See that? This is only, the 300 indicated on the disk is only the read speed. So it is completely useless to us to know if the data rate, the speed of the card basically to get information into it is going to even work for us. Write speed 260 MBS maximum burst it says. So this means that if you were writing say photos and it was, you know, chunks of information uh, going in, the maximum amount that it can hit is 260, okay? But in video, this isn't the most important thing, okay? We need to know if we're ever going to get dropped frames, okay? The way we know that is to know what the minimum write speed is. What we need to know is at what point is our video uh, feed going to be interrupted uh, based on what information can possibly go into it. Is there a bottleneck? How small is the bottleneck? And will our data actually get through? Now you see this, write speed 30 MBS, 30 megabytes a second, minimum. This means that the write speed is only guaranteed, at least based on the spec sheet for this disk here, the write speed is only guaranteed to stay 30 megabytes a second at the highest. Okay, It means that it will never drop below this 30. But again, if we go back to our data rates, we've got 160 here. So since this number, 160 megabytes a second, see MBS, okay, this isn't megabits, this is megabytes. These are huge files, even at 18.1. These are 160. This is going to be shoving in 160 megabytes per second into that disk. This 30 is way, way less than 160, okay? 
it means that you'd have to sustain it up in this, you know, more upper speed, which is not going to happen. You're not guaranteed to get this. You're only guaranteed to get this number. So what it means is that this card with this number on here is most likely going to result in dropped frames or not even be able to record anything. You might get like a second maybe or like a little tiny bit of information because it has that big spike of the maximum, but then it's going to drop. And the minute that that data rate drops below this number, you're going to have drop frames without question. So this is out. Now, how can we tell on this card what the minimum rate would be? Well, this one has a particular rating. Um, it's this, see this three here? If you, if you go into the details, it says here, thanks to its U3 speed class, minimum write speeds are guaranteed not to drop below 30 MBS. So that U3 is similar to another number that I'll show you in a second. Let's look at this Lexar 128 gigabyte professional 2000X blah blah blah. Let's look at this one, okay? Now, this one also says 300 MBS, right? But we learned that this number is not really needed for us, right? This, this number is almost useless. But we do notice that there's that U3 on there, but also there's this V90. See that? V90. So this number is an indicator that tells us what the minimum write speed is. On the other disk, we did not have a V number. So we had to go based on this U3 thing. This V90 is telling us that the minimum write speed for this card is 90 megabytes a second. It is three times faster on the minimum write speed than the previous SD card. So just to check my, my work here and the specifications here, the data transfer, we've got a read speed of 300, write speed of 260, similar to what we already saw, and then the minimum write speed, 90 megabytes a second minimum. So that means this card, even though it had the same 300 put on the front, has a minimum write speed of 90 megabytes a second, which means that it's three times faster on its minimum write speed, okay? Now, again, though, look, 160 in 18.1. That means that at some point, most likely, this card is going to end up with dropped frames because it's a 90 megabytes a second, and that's almost half of this 160. Now, does that mean that this card here will never be able to record that 18.1 12K? No. It's got a maximum write speed that's a little bit higher, right? So you might get a burst. If you shot, you know, burst shots with this, you might get a little bit. But at some point, you are going to eventually get drop frames, most likely, because this minimum write speed score is less than what we're seeing here. One of the brands that a lot of people are talking about with uh, any memory when it comes to SD cards or CF cards or whatever are these Angel Birds, especially the AV Pros. Now again, that's got that 300 MBS, right? But again, it's got that V90. To my knowledge, this 90, this V rating, is the highest known rating for SD cards. Now whether or not this particular card is able to stay at a sustained recording rate that's higher than the other cards, I don't really know. You're gonna probably have to test that yourself or maybe get some reliable information from someone else who's used these. If we go into the specs here on these Angel Birds, we see some more information that might be able to help us. We've got a data transfer here again. We've got a read speed of 300 MBS again, right? This is sequential. And then we've got sustained, which is more important for video. So it says a write speed 260 MBS sustained. Now, this would help us more with video because it's telling us, well, you know, this card can sustain this 260 MBS for a period of time. Now, how long that is, I don't really know because the write speed minimum says 90 MBS, which means that according to whatever information that we currently have, if all we did was go off the spec sheet given to us by the manufacturer or whoever, all we can tell is that this card at some point will drop below this number, which means that is highly likely we will have dropped frames with this card. Now, does that mean that with this card, because it has that sustained rate versus the others, that this card is going to be better than any other SD card that doesn't have that rating? Well, we don't really know 
because the other manufacturers haven't given us that information. All we know is that this one does have that information, and it could mean that we could have a better chance of not getting dropped frames if we have burst shooting with this camera, but we don't really know that for sure. So with SD cards, the reason why I'm a little sketchy on using these with this camera is because this data rate is so dang high that any uh, safety that you have from that V rating is kind of out the window. You're going to have to test these cards on your own or use software such as Blackmagic Designs, uh, media testing software to know if you can even use these at this capacity. Okay. Now that's SD cards. What about CF cards, right? Let's, let's look at some of these. At BNH, I just did a search for CFast cards and let's just look through here. So the top one is uh, SanDisk Extreme Pro and it's got a bunch of information on here. So let's click on that. So we've got a SanDisk Extreme Pro. It's got 256 gigabytes. It's got a read and a write. Look how much more information they give you, by the way, um, compared to some of the other cards that you see that are SD cards, right? You've got a read speed, you've got a write speed, and then you've got this little movie thing, a clapper, with 130. Now, what does all this mean? Well, let's look. We've got a read speed. Again, remember what I what we looked at with the SD cards, same kind of information. We've got a read speed of 525, so way, way faster, right? Um, we've got a write speed of 450 MBS maximum. Keyword here is maximum, okay? Now, the minimum on this one is 130 megabytes a second. I mean, this is still very high. This means just like what we saw with the V scores of V30, 60, or 90, for example, with this, which is a VPG rating, um, we've got 130 megabytes a second minimum, which means that this is guaranteed to shoot at least 130 megabytes a second at any given time, guaranteeing that uh, you, you will get data transfer without dropped frames as long as it doesn't go above this indefinitely. Now again, that's still lower than 160, or if we looked at constant quality, 180, right? It's, it's definitely lower than this 241 rating. Does this mean that this card will never be able to write the 12K at those compressions? No, it means that based on the specs, if that's all we had, it's telling us that the chances of getting dropped frames are still there. Even with very fast CFast cards, you're still going to have a risk based on the specifications of dropped frames, okay? Or errors or whatever, okay? So that's important to know whenever you're looking for uh, storage media to know what the media is actually capable of, okay? You cannot go based on just this speed here, okay? If you only go based on this speed, you're really going to get blindsided. And I've seen so many situations on forums where people do not understand that this write speed is a maximum, okay? This is the guarantee, okay? This is the guarantee right here of what you can sustain indefinitely with this card over a period of time. Okay, so here's another uh, one of these angel birds. Again, these are the ones that a lot of people talk about as being extremely fast for video production. This one is very bare bones on what the actual numbers are. So it's a little, it's going to, you're going to actually have to go through and look at this, uh, the specifications to really understand. So let's hit the specs again. And notice here, it's got a read and a write speed for, for uh, sequential and for sustained. Now, what bothers me is that there's a lack of a minimum amount. There's a no VPG rating for some reason. I'm not sure why, but it gives us a 430 MBS sustained. Now, does having this number tell us that uh, this card is likely to give us um, a more steady uh, recording and possibly not have drop frames compared to the other card that we looked at? Maybe. But, you know, the other card doesn't have this, so it's hard to know, okay? Um, but because this doesn't have a minimum rating, it's hard for me as a buyer to go, okay, I want this one, okay? Because I don't have that, that benchmark to uh, compare. And I'm very, very conservative when it comes to media. The easiest way to screw up a shoot and to get fired is to buy the wrong media where you ruin a shoot, okay? So... You know, this company, it would be better if you had, in my opinion, a, a rating here to let us know what the minimum was, at least give us a manufacturer minimum, 
you know, if you can't give us the VPG for some reason, but give us a manufacturer minimum, that would help me out, especially when looking at how high these data rates are. I mean, these are extreme, okay? These are huge. Even at this really large compression, it's pretty huge. Um, so again, does this mean that on these cards, even if they don't have a rating or whatever, that you'll never get any 12K on them? No, I'm not saying that, okay? I'm talking about safely recording and knowing that no matter what you shoot and how you shoot, having that minimum rating is, uh, in my opinion, essential to understanding um, as a consumer what you're actually buying and whether or not that card will actually work. And without ratings like that, and without you testing it yourself, you should use like a speed test kit. Uh, BMD does have a speed test program that you can use for any media, as far as I understand, SSDs, uh, cards, or whatever, that can help you understand what those cards are probably going to be capable of with their um, recordings. So the reason I talk about this stuff is just to help you guys out, okay? I'm not doing this to make people feel bad or like be elitist or whatever. It's just that you should be an informed consumer when it comes to buying anything like this because your job could be on the line. And I don't want to see people buy, you know, a camera that's capable of all this cool stuff, you know, and sell a client on it and then walk away with nothing, you know, go shoot all day and walk away with drop frames and, um, you know, errors in your footage because you bought the wrong media. That's all, okay? I just want you to be informed. You know, this camera is not out on the market yet. You're going to have to do testing and you're going to have to do thorough testing of the media to make sure because as far as I understand, CFast cards and SD cards are going to struggle with this um, because they're just, you know, generally not that fast. You know, they're just generally not that fast. It's probably SSD will probably be the better way to do this because SSDs can reach those higher speeds, I think, easier than these uh, the current CFast cards. CF Express and stuff like that, I mean, probably those would be better, but we don't, you know, this has CFast and UHS-2. So, you know, just keep all this in mind, okay? You know, you can disagree with me. You know, if you want to get slower media and, you know, roll the dice on that, that's that's up to you, man. You 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 be you. I'm just trying to, to give you my opinion on this uh, based on the information that we have available um, so that, you know, we can be a little bit more informed when it comes to getting media, okay? I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, Give me a like if you liked it. Um, let me know what you think below, and I'll see you next time.